and welcome to Tunapuna Open Bible Church Online. It is such an honor and a pleasure to serve you in this way. So without further ado, here is Reverend Dr. Desmond Austin. For us to maintain and sustain our physical bodies, we must eat healthy. But sadly, when it comes to our spiritual growth, that is not done. Many times we allow ourselves to feed on things that can be toxic. This message by Reverend Dr. Desmond Austin entitled Death in the Pot teaches us to be careful of what we feed on if we wish to grow into our purpose. The message was delivered just before the call by the government to not congregate. The message is a timely one for us all. Please take heed as the man of God ministers to us. And Elisha returned to Gilgal, verse 38, and there was a famine in the land. Now the sons of the prophet were sitting before him, and he said to his servant, pay attention to the instructions, eh? put on the large pot, large pot, boil stew, that's two, for the sons of the prophets. Three. Simple instruction. You, Mr. Gehazi, put on the large pot. These boys here, they're hungry. You need to make a stew for them. And you need to serve them. But watch what happened. So one went out, one of the sons of the prophet. He went out into the field to gather herbs. That's how they did it. And found the wild vine, a wild vine, and gathered from it a lap full of wild gourds. And came and sliced them into the pot of stew. Watch this now. Though they did not know what they were. Glory to God. Man, God this, this, this particular vine and this God, it was like a, a, a sort of a, Pumpkin, wild, but it was not pumpkin. Looked like it, didn't taste like it. And the Bible tells us, then they served it to the men who to eat. Now it happened, verse 40 tells us, as they were eating the stew, that they cried out and said, Man of God, there is death in the pot. Man of God, there is death in the pot and they could not eat it so he said then bring me some flour you know somebody has been preaching tell you everything about the flour what kind of flour it was and why the flour this is not spooky spiritual stuff this is not over here. it's just a process of faith and he put it into the pot and he said serve it to the people that they may eat and there was nothing harmful in the pot amen remember the theme today death in the pot. The first principle that we must be mindful of. Remember how this thing was done. Remember these were sons of the prophets. Remember these were men who were supposed to know what to do in the context of ministry. So I'm adopting the context of what was done and applying it into ministry. Whether in the ministry of marriage, whether in the ministry of the word of God, Ministry of Worship, Ministry of Teaching, Sunday School, Ministry of Evangelism, Ministry of Counseling. The first principle is this, as we think about this man who went out, found this wild thing on the vine. Everybody is making this big cook. And he comes, slices it, puts it in the stew, stew it up, and everybody is eating. The first principle, be careful of what you are served. Are you listening to me? Be careful of what you are served. Are you listening? Please listen. Even in the context of what's happening today with this COVID, I've heard all kinds of prophecies. Everybody's going to be affected is one prophecy. Another prophecy, after the carnival, we're going to see so many people sick in this country. And the catalog is endless, and we can go on and on. But we live in a world today where we as Christians, we must be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. 
And the Bible says, as Jesus spoke to his disciples, he says, take heed what you hear. And so I want you to be careful of what you are served. Remember, there are some good meals that may be contaminated. I want to say it again. There are some good meals, or there are some good meals, yes, that may be contaminated. Advice that people will give to you. Counsel that people will give to you. Messages people will uh, preach to you. Prophecies people will give to you. Be careful what you serve. You have to be so accurate. You've got to be like an Elisha. You've got to be in tune with God to discern differences. Spirit of wisdom is what you must pray for. The God-given ability to discern differences. What must be said and what must not be said? What must be accepted and what must be rejected? Who are your friends and who are not your friends? Where to go and where not to go? In a prayer meeting yesterday as we prayed one for another, one man of God came to me and he prayed such a prayer that I was so blessed because I'm in the throes of dealing with some serious issues now. And when he spoke to me, I said, this is God confirming what is in my spirit. I need wisdom. You need wisdom. We all need wisdom. You have wisdom that comes from above. But there's also a devilish wisdom that is earthly, that is sensual. But the wisdom of God that comes from above is peaceable, easily entreated. We need to be very careful of what you are served. There is debt in the pot. And by accepting it, it can lead to your ultimate destruction. Wrong advice. Wrong advice. Wrong counsel. Wrong message. Wrong concept. Wrong decisions. And you accept it. It's contaminated. It can lead to your ultimate destruction. Ultimate destruction of your ministry. Ultimate destruction of your marriage. Ultimate destruction of the entire team. Be careful of what you are served. Secondly, be careful of who serves you. Ah, uh, here is a young man zeal, full of zeal, but he comes and he serves. He's not just serving himself, but he's serving the entire group. And they all could have perished based on one wrong decision, one wrong choice. I'm saying to you, be very careful of who serves you. There were those whose zeal might be to your detriment. There were those whose zeal might be to your destruction. There were those whose zeal might lead to your downfall. Not everyone that comes in your direction with a blessing may ultimately lead you to your great success. There were those whose zeal might be to your destruction. Be careful who serves you. In other words... He was among the sons of the prophets. He had his credentials. There was no distinction between him and all the others. But yet, he had not been prepared. Be careful of who serves you. Number three, be careful now concerning you. Be careful how you serve. People trust you. People trust what you are saying. People trust how you're praying. People trust what you're telling them. Nobody had any reason to mistrust this son of the prophet. He was doing the right thing. He was trying to help. We are all hungry. Didn't we talk about that some time ago? And as a people of God, there must be a hunger. There must be a hunger for God's word, a hunger for his presence, a hunger for the very power that is to be Received in this hour from God himself. Be hungry for prayer. So here is a man of God, a minister of the gospel, so to speak. He is like everybody else. There is no reason to look at him as different, as distinct. But yet he serves and everything didn't go right. But you are serving people today, whether you're aware of it or not. You are serving people today. Ministers of music, 
ministries of worship, ministries in teaching children, ministries in the youth, ministries of evangelism, ministries of apostolic leadership, ministries of evangelistic leadership, ministries of the fivefold. We must be careful huh, of how we serve because we might be doing things by our actions, our attitudes, our choices. We might be leading people to destruction. Not only must we be careful of what we are served and be careful of who serves us, but we ourselves must be careful, very careful of how we serve. Remember, your intentions might be good, but may result in the destruction of the entire team. No preparation, yet service. No commitment, yet service. No understanding of what is the end result, yet service. It's always good to start from the end. What is the intention? If we know what we are trying to accomplish, we know what to put into it. Always have a sense of destiny, a sense of vision. A sense of where we are going. Because sometimes people just jump inside of the thing. And they don't know where they're going. They don't know why they're there. They don't even know what they're doing. Everybody's preaching, so let me preach too. Everybody's singing, let me sing too. Everybody's teaching, let me teach too. What are you teaching people? How prepared are you? How good are you at what you're doing? Be very careful of how we serve. Remember, we'll all stand before God to give an account for the things we do in this life. So while we may do it to please men, remember, i rather please God than to please men. Number four, one wrong decision can result in the destruction of an entire group, an entire church, or an entire organization, the catalog is endless. One wrong decision. A last man of God, there is death in the pot. How did this happen? One wrong choice. A last man of God, there is death in the pot. How did this happen? One decision. One decision. One man. One wrong choice. And the entire team was faced with utter destruction. Just imagine that Elijah wasn't there. Or just imagine that this taste was not as bad as it were. Then what would be the end result? Be careful. Be very careful of your decisions. As you work with a team, remember teamwork makes the dream work. Don't be doing your own thing. Don't be just having your own way. Don't be so full of zeal that you're not concerned about what might be the end result. One wrong turn, one wrong action. Do you know there are people who are in this church that you may not know? That may be out there living a particular life, doing particular things, and people brand all of us because of that person's life, because of that person's choice. There are people who will say, I don't want to be a part of that church. You don't even know why, but there is somebody who is out there, who is a part of this congregation, who may not even be a member of the local church, but they are coming to the house, living a life out there, one decision, one choice, one action, one attitude, and everybody is branded. These people in the church are like that. One wrong decision can result in the destruction of an entire group. Be very careful of who is on your team. Be careful of who you choose to walk with. Be careful of who you put to represent you. Number five. Now what gets done is what is, is inspected and not necessarily what is expected. What gets done is what is inspected. Now Gehazi, I could have given you a long list of Gehazi. Gehazi I gather that Gehazi was, you know, things were delegated to Gehazi. He was the servant of Elisha. But Gehazi was a kind of a carefree kind of a guy. Gehazi was a man who always had to get things done after much prompting, after much pushing. 
Gehazi was not the kind of guy who will actually watch over things as he should. Gehazi was the kind of guy who, when Elisha would make decisions, he will want to know why you're making these decisions. He's the kind of guy who was there, even though people were hungry, but he was not hungry, he was greedy. There's a difference between hunger and greed. You see, your hunger can be satisfied, but your greed can never be satisfied. No matter who you are, if you're greedy, you will never be satisfied. Because the more you get, the more you will want. And here it is that the man, Gehazi, he was a kind of a greedy guy. And he didn't care too much about who was cooking and what they put in the pot. That's the kind of reckless guy he was. There were some people that are careless. And there were some people that are carefree. But then there were those that are careful. Which one you prefer to be among? Those that are carefree? Those that are careless? Or those that are careful? Talk to me. I want to be among careful people. Gehazi was a kind of a carefree man. Anybody could come in, the, in his team and they could do what they want. And so what gets done is what is inspected. You see, everybody was cooking. And that was, was expected that there would be a big pot with a big stew to feed everybody. Who is in charge? I told you, pay attention to the instructions. Elisha said to his servant, you are responsible. Never delegate without responsibility. Never delegate without accountability. It is you, Gehazi, in the final, in the ultimate, it is your responsibility for what happens in this stew for these hungry people. But now you have not been doing what you're supposed to do. And that's why there is death in the pot. When we have people that are carefree, when we have people that are greedy, when we have people that don't care about what the end results might be, you will always find death in the pot. Alas, man of God, there is death in the pot. What gets done is what is inspected. He never took time to ask that son of the prophet who went out and picked those wild things on that wild vine, what is that? He sat down with everybody. Everybody was doing what they had. Of course, they had to cut, they had to peel, and they had to cook. And he was among them. Nobody took time to find out. And Gehazi didn't take time to find out. Why did Elisha ask Gehazi to do what he did? Because he knew he was capable he knew he was capable, but he didn't take time to check out what this man was putting in the pot. Be careful. Be very careful. Remember number six, zeal, you know this, zeal without knowledge is dangerous. It's good to have zeal. One thing I don't like is people that don't have zeal. I don't like to be around Christians that are dead, dying, and full of death. Boring, dull, dumb. It's not what Christianity is about. I like people full of zeal. But their zeal must always be accomplished with knowledge. Zeal without knowledge is dangerous. And we are not talking here about head knowledge, but we are talking about experiential knowledge. Have some experience in the field of your endeavor. Have some, in, some sort of experience, some knowledge that will help you in what you're doing. You can't just be running around as you wish. I like this old story that you find in the account of David when his son Absalom was dead. Of course, the captain of the army, we're going to come and preach about that in some time. The, the man's name was Ahimaaz. He was a religious guy. He was the son of the priest. And there was a guy who was a Cushite. And the Cushite knew what happened. He knew exactly how Absalom had died. And the command from the captain of the army was to go and tell David what you saw and what has happened. I want to go and tell the king. The king 
The, the captain of the army said, why would you go if you have no tidings ready? Another time you will go. Ayama says, come what may. Let me run. Are you listening to me? Ayama's outran the cushion. He came before King David panting, breathless. And David says to him, what happened? And Ayama said, I saw a crowd. I heard a noise. Why well, you know what's going on? Zeal without knowledge is dangerous. A matter of the kingdom advance. A matter of a shift in the atmosphere. A matter of change in the order of things. It's so very demanding. And yet, you're running with a message and you don't know what happens or what is happening. It reminds me of the church today. Many of us are in church, but we have no idea of what's happening in the kingdom. We know about religion and we could sing and we could, you know, we know about the crowd and we know all about clapping and we know, oh, but what is happening? What is God saying in this hour? What is the atmospheric shift saying to us? What is happening in terms of the seasons all around us? Well, 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 well. I, we got to know what is happening. We got to pray for the wisdom of God. We have to be like the sons of Issachar, men who understand the times, to know what we ought to do. One of the things that I know for sure, 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 that God is saying to His church, it's time to grow up. It's time for maturity. It's day of religion and just marking time in the boot camp is over. Get serious with God. How many times we must say that? Be kingdom-minded. Understand the kingdom mandate. Understand who you are, who you're serving, why you're serving. Understand what to do. Where you're planted, you got to grow. Imagine this. Just imagine this. Let me give you an example. You know, you still have to beg Christians to come to church. You still have to beg Christians to come to church. But, but that's not a big thing. But when we get on the outside, we don't even know what to do. You get in a position in life and you don't even understand why you're there to bring shift and change in the kingdom or bring the kingdom into your workplace. Bring the kingdom into your community. Bring the kingdom into that group. You don't understand why you're there. And that's why we still have church and religion. I think the Holy Spirit is grieved. We have to understand that zeal without knowledge is dangerous. And that's what's happening. Everybody in the cook, everybody in the brew, Everybody making stew. Are we having a stew pot or a melting pot? Everything just blended up together. Smells good, tastes good? No? It's death in the pot. We've got to change our thinking. I'm saying all that they say we need zeal. I said we need zeal. I say we need zeal. I'm not preaching against zeal. I'm preaching against the sense of having zeal without knowledge. Zeal is necessary. Zeal Without knowledge is dangerous. Number seven, not everyone who is stirring the pot understands how to cook. Not everyone who is stirring the pot understands how to cook. Not everyone who is preaching, not everyone who is teaching, not everyone who is singing understands what they are doing. Some people just want to do things because they are a part of. Some people want to do things because they're seen. Some want to be heard. Someone, you know, there are different reasons. I can, the sorted catalog is endless. But I want you to be assured of what you're doing and why you're doing it, that you know what you're doing and why you're doing it. Don't be full of zeal and just get involved in ministry. You're exposing yourself to the adversary. Remember, he's the one who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He doesn't care so much about you, you know. But he can use you as a target to destroy others, even though you're in ministry. He has many years of experience. So get into the presence of God. Get into prayer. And when you're running with a message, when you're doing something for God, make sure it's out from the heart of God. Remember, the secret is still an audience of one. Don't be messed up. Get serious. Not everyone who is stirring the pot 
understands how to cook. Hallelujah. Not because you have a brand name. Not because you have a title. Not because you have a certificate. Not because you're among the sons of the prophets. Means that you know exactly what to do. Doesn't mean so. A lot of people have certification, but no anointing. A lot of people have titles, but no anointing. A lot of people are, will have positions, but no calling. A lot of people will have privileges, but no responsibility. A lot of people will have entitlement, but not understanding purpose. Thank you so much for joining us here at Tunapuna Open Bible Church Online. Please stay in touch with us. You can do so by calling our office at 663-8667. Join us on Facebook at Tunapuna Open Bible Church and on Instagram at Tunapuna Open Bible. Members, you are reminded that you can still give your tithe and your offering, whether you choose to do so in person at our church office or take advantage of our online service. If you are writing a check, please do so to the Incorporated Trustees of the Open Bible Standard Churches, tnt tunapuna Continue to stay in prayer and remember that we are praying for you and your families. With God, all things are possible. See you next week. God bless you. Oh, 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 we have the power. I'm gonna tear down the kingdom.